What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing some confirmed PlayStation 5 details, things like the specs and the features for the console. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing some rumors for the PlayStation 5 that have yet to be announced. Let's get right into this. So as of right now, the PlayStation 5 has yet to be announced for when it's going to be released. It's presumed right now that it's going to be 2020 or 2021. And if it does happen that way, that means the console is officially going to be announced February of that year, whenever they decide that they're going to release it, which means that the console is going to come out in November of that year. That way they can benefit from the holiday sales for that year for the console and for the company. Some of the specs that have been announced for the PlayStation 5 as of right now are the CPU and GPU are going to have an AMD chip. The audio for the console is supposed to be 3D audio, which is believed to be dramatically different than the PlayStation 4. To me, the PlayStation 4 audio is awesome. It is on point. It does sound good, but can it be improved? Of course, they can find a way to improve it. For me, does it need to be improved? Not so much. The storage for the system is going to have SSD, which is a solid state drive. And whenever tested, the loading time is supposed to be 0.8 seconds loading into the game compared to 15 seconds whenever they tested it on the PlayStation 4 for Marvel's Spider-Man. So that right there cuts down the loading time loading into a game from 15 seconds for the PlayStation 4 to 0.8 seconds for the PlayStation 5. For me, does that make a big difference? Not really, because the PlayStation 4 for only 15 seconds, that's not really that long, but 0.8 seconds, that's going to be a huge difference. And the resolution support for the console is supposed to have 8K support, which it's going to be interesting to see if you can get better resolution than the PlayStation 4 if you use just a regular TV and you don't upgrade to an 8K TV. Those are the specs as of right now that have been announced. Now, some of the features for the PlayStation 5 are... The PlayStation 5 will support backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4. For me, this makes complete sense because the PlayStation 4 is, in my opinion, the first Sony console that has really pushed digital games. And I know myself over the past few years, I've been buying more and more digital games. And if you usually, if you upgrade to a new console, you lose access to all those games because you will not be able to play them on the new console. You'll have to go back to your old PlayStation 4 to be able to play those games. So the fact that they are making it backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4 means to me, whenever you go on to your PlayStation 5, you should be able to log in and you'll be able to play your games that you bought from the PlayStation Store on the PlayStation 4. So you'll be able to play them on your PlayStation 5, which to me makes sense. And I'm really excited to see if that's going to happen because I have a lot of games I have yet to play on my PlayStation 4. And by the time the PlayStation 5 comes around, I still may not have played some of them. So it's going to be... Really awesome if I'm able to play them with the PlayStation 5, even though I bought them on the PlayStation 4. On that note, the PlayStation 5 is not going to be digital only. They do have a physical media drive, which means you'll be able to purchase the actual discs and put into the system. So they're not getting rid of physical discs, which is a fear for a lot of gamers. Like I said, I know a lot of people buy digital games now. I do as well. But I do like the nostalgia of going and getting a game. So there's specific games, ones that I collect, that I always try to go and purchase the physical game. The next feature is that games will likely come out on both the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 at first, kind of like they did on the PlayStation 4 when it was released. They brought out games on the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 and eventually only made it for PlayStation 4. So I assume they're going to do the same thing and eventually it's going to be only PlayStation 5 when the games are coming out. The next feature is that the PlayStation 5 will have some form of cloud functionality, which makes sense because they're always improving the PlayStation cloud. So I think they're going to do some big things for the PlayStation 5 with the cloud. It's going to be interesting to see what exactly they do, but I'm on board with it 100%. And the last feature is the PlayStation 5 is going to have PSVR and they're going to be upgrading and pretty much overhauling their VR experience, which is going to be awesome because I think they've been pushing that for a few years now. Me, on the other hand, I'm not really into VR. I don't think I'm going to ever get a VR headset, but it's interesting for a lot of gamers that are into that sort of thing. So as of right now, everything that I just mentioned are confirmed PlayStation 5 details. So I honestly cannot wait to see when the PlayStation 5 is going to be announced. But now I'm going to be sharing some rumors for the PlayStation 5 as well. 
So the first rumor is the PlayStation 5 controller details. As of right now, Sony has not announced any pictures, any specs, or any details for the controller. However, I feel they're going to stick with the same design like they have for every generation of PlayStation console. But right now, if you go online, you can see some fan-created images that, for me, I hope do not come true. The first rumor for the controller is that there's going to be a camera built into the controller. That way, you can scan your face into the game and become characters and do different features like that. I know the PlayStation 4 has that feature, but it's a separate camera that you have to purchase. For me, I'm not really into that. I'm not really going to be using that if that is a feature on the controller. It's going to be pretty useless to me. And the other feature is that there's going to be a touch screen on the controller, and that way you can go through the menus on your controller instead of looking at the TV. I really hope that's not the case. I don't want to see a screen on my controller because to me, if I'm using a controller, I'm going to be looking at the TV screen to go through the menus. I don't want to go through the menus on my controller. Right now, I think that is the biggest rumor. I doubt that's going to come true. But like I said, the controller details have not been officially announced, but I assume they're going to stick with the PlayStation design. I doubt there's going to be a camera and I doubt there's going to be a touch screen. The next rumor for the console is going to be the price range. A lot of people are assuming because Sony is doing so many new features and they're going to have so much going on with it that it's going to be very expensive. Other people think not so much. Right now, the rumor is it's going to be around four to six hundred dollars for the console, which to me is very reasonable. However, I get my consoles on Black Friday, a year after they've launched. So that means that it's going to be around the $200 mark for me, and that's what I would recommend. I never buy a console on launch because it has so many glitches and so many problems with it, and the price is usually expensive. Usually if you wait a year, number one, the price goes down. Number two, Black Friday sales are usually really good for the consoles. Another rumor right now is that the PlayStation 5 is also going to have backwards compatibility for the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3. I think something like that may be in the works right now because if you go onto the PlayStation Now, which is a feature on the PlayStation 4, there is some PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games on there, but for me, I doubt they're going to have it where you can put the physical game into the console and be able to play it. I think what they're going to do if they do have backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, I think it's going to be an online service where you pay a fee and you're able to go and scroll through and play different games from those consoles when you want to, kind of like PlayStation Now. I think if they're going to do that backwards compatibility with the older systems, I think that's the only way they're going to pull it off. And the last rumor I'm going to be sharing is the PlayStation 5 name with the Xbox Scarlet announced as the next console. It's going to be very interesting to see if PlayStation goes down that same route. However, I don't feel that's going to be the case. Xbox went Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. PlayStation went PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. I assume they're going to stick with tradition and they're going to name the next console the PlayStation 5. So this has been some of PlayStation 5's confirmed details and also some PlayStation 5 rumors. Which are you more excited for that I just mentioned that is going to be for the PlayStation 5? For me, it's the backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4, because on the PlayStation 4, I purchased a lot of games from the store, so I really would like to be able to play them and have the option to play them on my PlayStation 5. To me, that is amazing, but I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'm going to leave it here. Please take care. Peace.